for me, I think the biggest thing that football taught me was how to overcome adversity. At some point in your life, you're going to have some tough times. You have to have that next play mentality. That cohesiveness and that working together, that's really something special that you can't get in a lot of other areas. When you practice that and you live that in other phases of your life, it, it, it becomes second nature because all you know how to do is fight. It's not an easy game. If it were easy, everyone would do it. You start to appreciate the, the smaller contributions that people make. You don't just look at the big one because you knew it took six or seven other guys who are unsung. And, uh, you know, you, you can't take shortcuts and be successful. Doing what they do to make it possible for the guy getting the press clippings or whatever it might be. In this game, whether it's as a coach or a player. So, um, I would certainly say that, um, you know, you definitely got uh, a very quick lesson in how to overcome adversity playing football. Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook here on the campus of Bethune-Cookman University with head football coach Terry Sims. Coach, appreciate you taking time. Thank you for coming. Well, here's the thing. You know, success is, it just doesn't happen by happenstance. This is going into your third year here at Bethune-Cookman. You built a culture of success. How has that success been built, and what would you like to see it built moving forward? Well, I think first and foremost, is it's been built with, with having a great administration. Uh, great board of trustees, great president, great athletic director. Uh, and having coaches that, that are buying into what we're trying to uh, sell these kids. And then having the kids buy into what we're doing. And I think having leadership on your football team. And I think where I want to see it go is I want to see our football players continue to grab this and move forward with it and continue to teach young players you know, how to be successful. Do you feel like Bethune-Cookman is what I like to call a sleeping giant program? Oh, it's no doubt that, that, that this program is a sleeping giant and I think, you know, anybody who has played us or watched us play, that they can tell you the same thing. Coach, you were an excellent defensive back in college and you had a track record of success coaching secondary, coaching defense in general. Do you think that perspective being from the back end, coaching defense and coaching the secondary kind of gives you a better perspective on coaching defense as a whole? You know how they say front end help out, helps out the back end, but you're basically coaching from back to front. Did that give you a unique perspective in your approach to coaching? I think it does because you're able to see the whole picture. You know, the defensive line, they really can't and they're not supposed to see what's going on behind them. And, and neither are the linebackers. But if you're a secondary guy and with the corners, we have what we call a 21-man rule. You want to keep 21 people inside you. And that's offense and defense. So I think the corners along with the safeties, it gives you a better look at what, what's going on it gives you a better better picture of what you want to happen because you, you're able to see both sides of the ball and you see everything moving you know from that position and offensively speaking I know I was a college running back and I can only see it from my perspective like a box perspective mm -hmm. but do you think playing on the back end and coaching on the back end kind of gave you a better perspective of offensive football as well because you were a running backs coach too right and, and I, I, I learned a lot of football coaching uh, <laughs> running backs I think it helped me you know, as a defensive coach, but you know, coaching the secondary, you have to be aware of not only the run, but obviously the pass. So I think it, it gives you a, a definite picture of the complete game. So I, I think it definitely helps you see the big picture. And just a follow up as far as playing the secondary is concerned, do you think it's tougher to play defensive back now than it has ever been? Uh, yeah. And the reason I say that because of, of all the spread offenses and you know, this new thing they got out now, the RPOs, and you have so many talented quarterbacks that, that are hurting you with their legs as well their, as, as their arms. And playing defensive back now, you have to make sure that, that you're in tune with all the new route combinations. And, you know, you also have to make sure that you're, you're uh, securing the quarterback. Coach, we're a long time assistant here, and many head coaching opportunities came about, but you didn't choose them. You chose this one. What made Bethune Cookman the most ideal spot for you? I think first and foremost the people and you know that's the same spill that, that I give kids when I talk to them. You don't want to go to a university, you don't want to choose a school because of the buildings. You want to you choose a university you know, on, based on the people that are in those buildings. 
And I think here, it's a family atmosphere. Um, not saying everyone gets along all the time, but it's a true family atmosphere. I think you feel the, 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 the warmth, you feel the love on this, this campus when you come here. And it was just something that, that I felt like I wanted to continue. I wanted to continue to, to build young men, you know, in a place like this. And it's only three hours from my hometown. So that made it, you know, a little bit more attractive. And, you know, just being in a place that I was familiar with. And I had been here for five years and, and we were successful. And I knew we had good players left around here. I knew it was good people surrounding this athletic department. Well, what advice would you give like a young coach that's coming in all hungry and aggressive, wanting to get that first head job? What would your advice be to them? Pick a job that you would do for free. Don't 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 pick a job based on the money, based on you know the the, the prestige, the limelight. You pick a job that you would do for free. I think that's a job that you have a true passion for. Coach, one question I always ask every coach I, I meet with is about their philosophy. I'm big on picking guys' brains and seeing what I could use to put into my own philosophy as far as football and how I approach uh, broadcasting or just doing X's and those stuff. So what's your coaching philosophy? Well, I'll tell you this and I'll break it down and make it real simple. First and foremost, we're about building men. And we wanna make sure that every young man in this program is a positive, productive citizen when he leaves here. We wanna make sure that we not only prepare them on the football field, but off the football field as well. We wanna make sure these guys understand how to, to be great husbands, great, great fathers. We wanna make sure that they understand if they don't already, how to be great sons to their parents, You know how to be great brothers to, to their, their siblings. So it, it's all a part of making sure that these young men are prepared when they leave Bethune Cookman University. That kind of ties right into recruiting, doesn't it? Like you're recruiting those guys that have those type of uh, traits. So what would you say is the Bethune Cookman man student athlete looks like? Detailed, disciplined, very respectful young man. And we go and we'll research every young man that, that we talk to. And I just left two high schools yesterday and we talk to the ladies in the cafeteria. We talk to the janitors. I want to know how you treat everyone in that school. Not just how you react to your football coach. Because you, you may treat your, your teacher a little bit differently than you treat your coach. You may not be very respectful to the, the lady in the cafeteria. I want to know that about you. Before I bring a young man into this program, I want to make sure that he has all the characteristics of a Cookman man. Or at least he, he, ha he has the values where we can instill that in him and build him into a Cookman man. Coach, this was a banner year for HBCU football, from the MEAC to the SWAC to the CIAA, SIAC. Uh, all those conferences, I thought, really upped their game. And you see a lot of uh, guys from the MEAC and SWAC in all-star games now, Shrine Games, Senior Bowl, NFL, PA. What's your thoughts on the state of HBCU, fo HBCU football now and where is it going? I think it's going in the right direction. I think it's definitely going in the right direction. And I think the, the biggest thing with that is uh, coaches. You're bringing coaches in that, that are not just in it for a paycheck. You're bringing coaches in that, that are, are, are skilled in their craft, coaches that care about the players. And you, you look around and there are some coaches in all those conferences that you mentioned have been at some, some pretty large universities. They've, they've been at some big programs and they continue to run their programs like the FBS programs. Mm -hmm. And no, we don't have all the money, all the resources, but you can make your program the best that it can be. And I think, you know, having that along with getting the transfers, because kids are, are starting now to look around and say, I'm not gonna sit here two years or three years before I play. I'll transfer down to FCS school where I can play right now. And a lot of guys are choosing HBCUs just for the simple fact of, of the, the game day atmosphere. And they understand now I can have that and still get a look at playing professional football and get a great college degree and it not be any less than what's going on now. And is, is it going in the right direction? Yes, because I think you're, you're continuing to get transfers. You're continuing to get great coaches in, at all these universities. And when you look at the CIAA and, and the SIC, they're Division II teams. But when you look at some of these coaching staffs, there's some guys on there that's been coaching for a while and they've coached at some, some you know, pretty major universities. So I think that's that's where it really starts with, with having guys that 
understand how to run programs. They understand the game and they're evolving with the game. It's, it's really no more of this three yards in a cloud of dust. Mm -hmm. Everyone understands that, you know, old saying, football wins championships. Well, offense puts people in the seats. And people want to see exciting football. They want to see you throw the football around. And that that's where I think football is going. That's where it's been going for the last few years. And you have to have guys that are going to evolve with the game and not let the game pass them by. You know what's interesting? And not, I'm not just saying this because I'm sitting here mm -hmm. at Bethune Cookman, uh, but I think you guys do a great job of developing players. Uh, in particular, you see guys get better year over year. Guys stay all four years, maybe five years. You look at Quentin Williams, uh, the quarterback. Mm -hmm. He got better year over year. You look at your receiving core, probably the best in the MEAC, better year over year. And by the time they're seniors, these guys are physically developed, they're mentally developed. And you talk to them, they are focused individuals. Do you think that development happens a little bit more here because it's a little bit more personal for you guys at uh, in the MEAC or SWAC or SIAC or CIAA? No question. I, I think it is definitely a little bit more heartfelt because, uh, and I don't get me wrong, I'm not going to say the FBS schools are not developing guys because they are, mm -hmm. but you know, there, there are a lot more bells and whistles at those places, a lot more resources to develop guys. Here you have maybe your strength coach, you know, you, you have your, your graduate assistants and you have your coaches and we're developing these guys mentally and physically and, and it's happening on a daily basis. And you have to watch these guys grow and mature. And it's amazing if you watch a guy grow from the time he comes to campus, his first day of camp, into the first day of, of summer workouts. And when you look at that development of a young man in an eight, nine month period, it's amazing. Well, Coach, if I had to do it again, I'd definitely choose Bethune Cook. I'm not saying it because I'm here, you know, because <laughs> it's nice outside. Y'all on the beat, you know. <laughs> Got your ace recruiting every year, but I really do thank you for taking time, sitting with me, introducing me to the program, and uh, giving me a little bit of knowledge about what you guys do and why you guys are successful. No problem. Anytime. Thank you. I, I think that the main reason to choose HBCU is for the family atmosphere. The guys are going to get the, the core values that, that, that their parents taught them, that their family members try to raise them. You'll have a close-knit atmosphere. You'll actually have guys that care about you as a person. So I think that's the main reason for choosing the HBCU.